What we will be doing in this video is showing you how to download and install Qt for MCUs with the options that you want. In this case, we will be installing a desktop version of Qt for MCUs. Additionally, we will install the image and tools needed for the STM32H750B discovery board. First, we go to the Qt account, which is at httpsaccount.qt.io, and log in with your email and password. When logged in, you have access to your license information and can also create a support ticket. But we will focus on downloading and installing Qt in this video. Click on Downloads and then make sure Qt Online Installer is selected in the list of products. You may find it is already done for you. Then click on Download. Since the online installer does not contain anything but the means to access the online service to download and install Qt from, then this should only take a minute at the most. Once it has been downloaded, then we can start the installer. The first page you will get will ask you to log into your Qt account. Fill in the fields using the same email and password as before and then click on Next. As you have a commercial license, then it will say Welcome to Commercial Qt Setup. If you are not seeing this, then please open a support request and we will rectify that for you. Now we click on Next. This will quickly download the metadata needed to know about what Qt versions and other products you have access to. The next page is about whether you want to send user statistics in Qt Creator to the Qt company or not. I will personally select Help us to improve by enabling sending pseudonym user statistics in Qt Creator for this and click on Next. Now you can choose the directory that Qt should be installed into. You can change this to what you want, but I will keep the default in my case. Since we are installing Qt for MCUs here, then we could select the MCU development option and select the board that we wanted that way. However, since we want to install the desktop version as well, then we need to have more control over what is installed. So then select custom installation and now click on next. What you have here is a list of everything you have access to broken down into four different groups. I will not go into detail about each one here, but I will briefly explain them. Archive is a list of all the older Qt versions, ones which are no longer supported, or ones that have since been replaced by a newer version in the same range, such as Qt 5.15.4 now that Qt 5.15.5 has come out. Note that this list will change depending on when you install. LTS is a list of just the latest long-term supported versions of Qt that are currently supported. Latest releases are the latest releases of any supported version of Qt, so this will also include the non-long-term supported versions too. Lastly, Preview is for those releases which are currently in beta and release candidate stages. What we will do now is install Qt for MCUs for the desktop and our board. First, expand the Qt for MCUs entries, and then Qt for MCUs 1.9.0, and you can see all the possible options. This lists all the boards that you have available and the desktop version. So scroll down a bit first and then click on the box next to desktop, MSVC, to choose the preview version of Qt for MCUs for the desktop. Since we want to install for our board too, put a tick next to STM32H750B-DK. If you do not have the ARM compiler or the board SDK installed, then you can install it from here too. If you are not sure if you already have it or not, then you can install it anyway. To do this, scroll down to third party tools and SDKs and then spend that, that and scroll down. Firstly, put a tick in the box next to ARM GCC 9 Q2 2020 as this will install the compiler for you. And then scroll down to the install the SDK that corresponds to the board that you are installing Qt for MCUs for. If you're not sure which one is relevant, then this can be found in the documentation. In this case, as we are installing for the STM32H750B discovery board, we need to put a tick next to the STM Cube 
programmer 2.5.0 and also stm 32 cube h7 v1.5.0 SDK. It should be noted that MSVC is not installed for you, so when you go to use the version of Qt for MCUs on the desktop, you will need to have MSVC already installed. Now we are ready to go through the final steps, so click on Next. The next page is the license agreement. As I am already aware of the contents here, I can click on the button next to I have read and agree to the terms contained in the license agreements. When you're ready to do that, then click on Next. Now we can pick the Start menu where the shortcuts will appear. I will use the default of Qt in this case. Now click on Next. And now it is ready to be installed. All I need to do is click on Install, then it will install everything for you. As this will take a bit of time, then we'll cut the video here and skip to the page after this as finished from installing. When it has finished installing Qt, then it will start the installer for the STM32 Qt programmer, since we have chosen that as one of the tools we needed to be installed. When this shows up, click on Next. This will present you some information to read, so once you have read that, then click on Next. The next page is the license agreement, so after you've read the agreement, then click on I accept the terms of this license agreement and click on next. The next step is where it will install into, and since we want to keep it as the default, as Qt Creator will expect to find it in that location, we click on next. This will then prompt you to allow the directory to be created, so click on OK. Now we are asked as to which packs we want to install and we will just go with the defaults here so we can click on next. This will then start the installation of the STM32 programmer. Shortly after it is started we will get a new installer for the device drivers which are installed by this tool. So in the new installer click on next. You will be prompted to install the drivers being installed by the system if they are not already installed. So we click on install when requested. When finished we click on finish and this will go back to the rest of the installation for the STM32 Qt programmer. Now click on next. The next step will set up the folder where the shortcuts will be installed in the start menu so we can accept the defaults here and click on next. Finally we can click on done which will take us back to the Qt online installer. Now that the installation is finished, all that remains to be done is to click on finish and Qt Creator will start for you, and you will be ready to start working on your application. If you ran into any problems along the way, then please open a support request via the support centre, and our support team will be happy to help you out. Thank you for watching.